G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday morning here in Australia, so obviously sort of Sunday evening, Sunday night over in the States. Now we have seen a little bit of a, pull, uh, a bounce back in the market, so it's up 2.9%, so you know Sunday wasn't too bad, obviously you know it's kind of been and gone over in the States. Uh, but yeah, nothing kind of do too drastic. It seems like the sell-off sort of came more around sort of the Friday and Saturday as opposed to the Sunday. There's a bit of a bounce back. Now, any kind of bounce back is a good bounce back, but you know we don't know that the worst is over yet. I would like to think it is, and I you know personally believe it is. Now that's not financial advice. I have to say that every single time, but I like to think the bottom is in. And there's certain indicators uh, that you know generally kind of show that stuff, uh, and we'll get to them very shortly. But let's have a look. 1.7 trillion, so nice, staying well above that 1.5 trillion, which was really really nice. BTC dominance has actually dropped down below 40% again. So are we going to you know go into some crazy altcoin season? No one really knows, but looking like that could still be the case, because again, as long as Bitcoin ranges. That's when altcoins go silly and Bitcoin is ranging at the moment. So ETH dominance up, uh, getting close to 19% there and gas prices, whew, 10, nice, very, very nice. But I can tell you right now, if you know we go into an alt season, that's going to go pretty high. You know, we'll have to wait and see how these, you know, layer two solutions, you know, particularly things like Optimism, Arbitrum, uh, and Polygon, you know, how they really affect the overall gas prices. I get the feeling uh, on the main layer of Ethereum, they're still gonna go pretty high. So hopefully, you know, anything that you're using is on a layer two solution. That is what you're really, really looking for. All right, let's have a look. I mean, it just looks like a sea of green over the last sort of seven days on the 24 hour and the one hour, which is really, really good. But again, we don't know if the bottom is in yet. It's looking good, but we'll get to the charts very, very shortly. All right, so what's done well in the last 24 hours? Because I mean, it's a sea of green uh, on the seven day, pretty much. I mean, Kasama 40% in seven days. Now that is from the low though. It's not, you know, 40%. So it's it's good, It's but it's a 40% a 40% recovery, not a 40% uh, pump price discovery. At least I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure Kasama was uh, a lot higher than that. So all right, 24 hours. What's done really well? Let's have a look because there's green all over the place, right? Waves, nice, got a bit of a 16% pump. Tezos, all right? Haven't heard much from Tezos in a long time. 11%, Phantom, Nexo, Amp, Polygon, there we go, making a bit of a move, but again, it has been down. I wouldn't be surprised if Polygon still doesn't go a little bit lower. Again, I'm not saying it will, but I just wouldn't be surprised. It was up at $2, I think it got to like nearly $2.20 or something. So, I mean, it already is getting down to a sort of 50% correction from its old all-time highs, which is good. So maybe it's a buying point. Either way, up 8%. Look, a, a lot of, you know, gains here, which is really, really good. Any gain's a good gain, as I've said before, but really it's that 15% and above for me. I consider, you know, a better gain. And I mean, you know, then you go up from there, you know, 40%, you know, 60%, 100% gain in 24 hours. That kind of stuff is just crazy. Now, we're not there yet, which is good, but hopefully it means the market is starting to recover a little bit. So really one kind of really good gain and everything, you know, again, I say this every time, any gain is a welcome gain. You're not, you know, knocking back any kind of gains but again for the crypto market 15 percent plus in 24 hours is a good gain seven days is a different story all right has anything not done so well the the you know the total market cap is up 2.9 percent but there can still be some losers in there so let's have a look all right pirate chain there we go and again i finally found out what pirate chain is it's a privacy coin so yeah, I'm still suspect. Just the name makes me worried. But anyway, look, it's lost a little bit, but it's still up 34% for the seven days. Uh, Leo token, don't know anything about that at all. Again, even though there's losses in 24 hours, I mean, the gains in the last sort of seven days um, make me think, again, that maybe the bottom was in. We'll have to wait and see. So things are looking pretty good. And then after that, look, there's only a few really small kind of losses there. Nothing major at all. Same thing with losses. Anything, you know, 15% and above in 24 hours is a reasonable size loss. Uh, and again, reasonable size gains is 15 plus percent as well. So it works both ways for me. In my personal opinion, that's uh, the way I look at the market. 
Now, there's not a lot of news because it is sort of Sunday over in the States, Monday here in Australia, Sunday stateside time. So I thought I'd do something different. I want to go and show you on the charts how I personally try and work out you know, where the market might be. And nothing's 100%, I'm no TA expert, but let's have a look. All right, number one, I think the MACD is really good. I like to use uh, the MACD, sorry, MACD down here, and the RSI. These are charts that I use. I also use volume moving averages, depending on it's, whether it's the daily, sort of the weekly and things like that. But these are some things. So volume, where, you know, is there any volume at the moment? There's not really much volume in Bitcoin at all. And look, that's fine. We don't need a ton of volume in Bitcoin at the moment. I'm not saying we wouldn't like it. It'd be great. But if there's no volume at the moment, that's cool. We have been basically ranging in Bitcoin since December last year. Now, we've had a high and a pretty brutal low, but it is just kind of ranging. It's staying in this kind of, you know, maximum of 64,000, 65,000 thereabouts and a low of pretty much 27,000. So as long as it just continues to go sideways, no issues. So volume's very low at the moment. That's why we haven't seen any, you know, high volume in selling. That's what happened here. This is basically, that's what capitulation looks like. Sort of here as well, people panicked and it got down to its low. And then you can see real exuberance. People buy here, they've bought almost at the low and everyone got really excited and then it pushed right up. So volume is something you can look at. It, it, Again, it's a bit of a lagging indicator because it's showing it after it's happened. All of these are really, but they're just things you can look for. Now, the RSI is an interesting one. You can see that the price here in Bitcoin was continuing to be pushed up, but we were getting lower highs on the RSI and lower lows on the RSI. They continue to get lower. So that is what you call bearish divergence. Even though the price was going up and everyone was getting super excited, the RSI was going down. So that was actually telling you had uh, bearish divergence. Now look what we have though. We have some bullish divergence. The lows are starting to get higher. Now again, the RSI, if you're under 20, severely oversold. Hence why great buying opportunity, great buying opportunity, potentially, not always. If you're in a bear market, then it just continues to get worse. But I don't believe we are. And it's holding within this uh, trend quite nicely. And so you can see the lows are starting to get higher. And now we're still in sort of, you know, oversold territory, but not super oversold. Once you get down into here, that's generally a super good buying opportunity. And once you're sort of up in this range, it's probably time to take some profits. It doesn't mean sell, because again, if you sold here and then you see this sort of bearish divergence playing out, again, you would have sold here. It's not as high as here and it's definitely not as high as there. So there's still more money to be made and they aren't always exact. You can't just simply look at these and go, rightio, it's oversold, so that means I must sell. No, sometimes the price can still go higher, particularly if you're in the midst of a really parabolic trend. But also, let's go down, so that's the RSI, the MACD, let's have a look. These crossovers usually give a pretty good signal of what's sort of coming. Now again, not always, but thereabouts. Again, when it got to here, the MACD started to change. It had a crossover and showed a bearish trend. Now we get down to about here, it has a crossover, and it shows a bullish trend. And look how it's matching up with the price. Now the RSI is not showing the exact same thing. It's got a similar pattern, but it was again still, I guess you could say, uh, bearish, 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 because lower lows, uh, and then bullish, bullish, bullish. Uh, the lows were starting to get higher. So you really need to take a combination of all of these things. But none of them are going to tell you exactly what the market is doing not individually and not even collectively sometimes. There's also things like sentiment, environmental factors. And again, they are kind of lagging. They can show things after it's sort of happening. And just because it has a cross here doesn't mean it can't all of a sudden turn around and then start to be more bullish price wise. But pay attention to these kind of things is what I say. It's not the be all and end all. I generally go more by my sort of gut feeling, but my gut feeling is based upon you know these kind of things this chart analysis here this is the upward trend as long as we're in this band i don't think uh we are in any bearish kind of trend it's just a retracement to the average to the mean if we break out of this and continue to travel sideways <laughs> oh, excuse me 
then again, that's not bearish just because we've broken out of this upwards channel sideways uh, movement. No issues. That says to me accumulation. It's if we break out of this and continue to set lower lows and go lower, absolutely, that would be a whole lot more sort of uh, bearish. So I'll stretch this out. So these are the kind of things I use. And again, then I got moving averages. I can't have everything going at once. It just becomes uh, too sort of messy. But what we can see down here is like I said, so the RSI all of a sudden has started to show some bullish uh, divergence as opposed to the bearish divergence we were seeing. Lower highs, lower lows. Now we are getting higher highs and higher lows. And what do we see down here on the MACD as well? We've had a crossover and now you can see it start to go green. So it does look like things are starting to be more bullish. But again, that doesn't mean that you rush out and put everything on it because look, again, market sentiment, whatever else might be happening in the world at the time can completely change those things. But these are the things I look for. So again, you can go and do uh, exactly the same if you, you know, haven't used these before. Again, uh, go up to your indicators, put in VOL, volume will come up, put in RSI, that'll come up, put in MACD, that'll come up. And again, there's a ton of other ones, but they're the things that I'm using. But mainly at the moment, it's just sentiment in the market is really what I'm focusing on. But then again, this helps me think that I think the bottom is in because of this uh, bullish divergence as opposed to the bearish divergence that we were seeing. And again, we've seen that flip and now it looks like things are starting to happen. But it's Sunday, so you generally don't get a lot of volume on, uh, on weekends. So what I'm waiting to see is come Monday morning state time, so that'll be Tuesday here in Australia, do we suddenly get a whole stack of volume and start to push up? I'm not so sure. I really do get the feeling like Bitcoin will probably travel sideways for quite some time before we sort of see anything. But again, that's not financial advice. I've been wrong before. I'm not too uh, proud to admit when I've been wrong. That's just the feeling I get. People aren't overly bullish on Bitcoin at the moment, but that can quickly change like that. And then all of a sudden, everyone becomes super bullish. Or again, maybe we go into some crazy kind of altcoin season. And a lot of people are thinking, you know, particularly in the DeFi sector, another DeFi summer like we saw last year. That was around August, September. Maybe it comes a little bit earlier. Who knows? All right, last but not least, DCA. So everyone hears about it, dollar cost averaging. Does it really work? You know, is there something that can kind of show you whether it's legit and really does work? All right, I've found a good site and I did get this from uh, another YouTuber the other day. So it is dcabtc.com. So dollar cost averaging into BTC. And what we can do is look back in history and see how it would have worked for you. All right, $10. Let's say we're going to go $50. Now, not everyone has $50, but... We, and not a week, we're going to say every two weeks. Maybe once a fortnight you got $50. And again, if you don't have $50, that's all right. You can put, put it in. And we're going to say what would have happened if you had have accumulated for four years. $50 every fortnight for four years. And we started four years ago. All right. So what we can see here is we would have invested $5,250 into Bitcoin over those four years. Today, that would be worth $27,861. That is up 400%. And that's based on today. We've had a huge correction. What would have been at the peak? Your $5,000 would have been worth $42,455. DCA, dollar cost averaging, does work, ladies and gentlemen. It 100% works. And it works in all kinds of investments. But what we need to remember is it doesn't work in bad investments and really, really short-time investments. So there's all these altcoins and things out there. I'm not saying, you know, Bitcoin is it. And again, none of this is financial advice. All I'm saying is Bitcoin has been around the longest. Yes, it's... Uh, upside isn't as much as what it used to have been because you can go back and do this from years ago and the upside would have been even more but it still continues to go up who is going to be upset with turning five thousand dollars into possibly forty two thousand dollars and if this bull run is still intact 
And again, Bitcoin maybe goes to 300,000. So that's nearly another 10x from here. That means your $5,000. And again, it'll be a little bit more because you're still adding $50 every fortnight. 10x of $42,000. Yeah, you know, let's round it up and say maybe you end up putting in sort of, I don't know, $6,000, another $1,000 more suddenly turns into a little over $400,000. That is what crypto can do. And they are the facts to the moment. Now, not the 400 because that's unknown, but if you started dollar cost averaging $50 every two weeks into Bitcoin four years ago, only three weeks ago it would have been worth 42000 and currently it's worth 27000 Find me another, another stock, another anything that can do that. These gains are getting less and less, so the next time around it's still going to be it's going to be a little bit less again. But we haven't hit mass adoption yet. We're still probably nearly a decade away from it. The upside is still plentiful, and I hope you're taking uh, note of these things. All right, look, that's it from me. What I want to know down below is have you dollar cost averaged in? Now, unfortunately, I didn't, and I'm kicking myself, but I have, I mean, I have been for the last year, but I got in late in 2017. So I got in around here at this peak, this last little euphoric bit. And then when I started to see a dip, I stopped dollar cost averaging. And I didn't start, unfortunately, until about here, back in March 2020 is when I got in. Now, don't get me wrong, it's done really, really well but I missed out on all of this. I could have made so much more. So for me, uh, again, I've been dollar cost averaging for the last year and a bit. I'm gonna to continue to do that. And most of what I'm dollar cost averaging into is Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen. There are some other things that I'll dollar cost average into. So Ethereum, I believe in that. Cardano, I believe in that. And Polygon, I believe in those. Those are the four that I will continue to dollar cost average into. But I'm putting most of it into Bitcoin. It's a little bit less. So Bitcoin's about 50% of my dollar cost averaging. Then, and again, I wasn't doing it when Bitcoin was at an all time high, uh, but I think I just will continue to dollar cost average. And again, it'll be a bigger proportion of Bitcoin. At the moment, it's about 50% because it's under its old all time high. So I know the upside is there. Once we get to its next all time high, I'll probably reduce that a little bit. But again, it'll be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polygon. That's what I'm going to dollar cost average into, mainly focusing on BTC. And what I would say is if you're now just kind of you know new to cryptocurrencies, start with Bitcoin. Dollar cost average into Bitcoin until you have 0 0.02 of a Bitcoin. That's what you're aiming for, 0 0.02 of a Bitcoin. Statistically, if you own that much Bitcoin, you will be a millionaire if it gets mass adopted and everyone is trying to own just a piece of Bitcoin. So that's the game. Get your 0 0.02 Bitcoin. Once you have that, then you can start look to dollar cost averaging into other things. But I would always continue to dollar cost average into Bitcoin in at least a small portion of it. Now, again, that's not financial advice. I can't offer you that. But again, imagine turning $5,250 into possibly... Four hundred, uh, sorry, forty-two thousand dollars, and again, most likely even more in the future. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're on that gain train at the moment. The market is up, so things are looking good, and I'll see you next time.